uncontrolled hypertension can actually result in cerebrovascular accident, popularly known as stroke, and other complications associated with it. As a nurse, it is your duty to give prescribed antihypertensive to hypertensive patients, and also it is your duty to watch out for the side effects of these medications. Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Messi Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we are going to be talking about anti-hypertensive. Anti-hypertensive. By the end of this class, you will be able to tell me the various classification of anti-hypertensive, their uses, and also their side effects. But before we go into the test, if you are new on our YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Alright, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we are going to be talking about anti-hypertensive drugs. But before we go into anti-hypertensive drugs proper, what is hypertension? Hypertension is said to have occurred when there is a persistent, a consistent elevation of the blood pressure above 140 90 milligram mercury. When there's what there's a persistent and consistent elevation, that's an increase in the blood pressure above 140 90 milligram mercury. So now we are talking about antihypertensive. For you to understand these drugs proper, you have to understand what hypertension is all about. For those that have not watched our video on hypertension, kindly do so. The first antihypertensive we have on the board is the diuretics. It's the what? It's the diuretics. What does the diuretics do? The diuretics help to reduce the blood pressure by removing excess water and excess sodium from the body. So that is the function, the main function of the diuretic. They remove what? They remove excess water and excess sodium in the body. So there are different classes of diuretic, different types of diuretics. We have the tyrosides, the potassium sparring diuretics, and the loop diuretics. Examples of the tyrosides is the chlorothiazide. Examples of potassium sparring diuretics, diuretics is what? Spironolactone. An example of loop diuretics is your Lasix. The Lasix is popularly known as the frucimide. I was in the exam hall a certain time and they told me to explain, uh, describe these Lasix drugs under the following headings. I didn't know they were asking me to talk about frucimide. So take note, frucimide is also known as what? Lasix. There's something common about most of the diuretics. When taking these diuretics, they reduce your potassium level. Diuretics do what? They reduce potassium level. So when taking um, diuretics, it is advisable you take food rich in potassium to help balance it. You get? But there's one that doesn't reduce the potassium level, which is what? The potassium sparring diuretics, as the name implies. Potassium sparring diuretic. It is sparing the, um, the potassium in it. So... This potassium sparring diuretics can also be used with other diuretics to reduce what hypertension. So take note of the fact that diuretic work they reduce blood pressure by um, uh, uh, removing excess water and sodium from the body. Then the second class of drugs we have is the beta blockers. The what? The beta blockers. What do the beta blockers do? They reduce the heart rate the heart's workload and the heart output. You know the heart pumps blood into circulation. You see it pumping blood. So what this beta blocker does is that they reduce the heart workload. They reduce the heart, out uh, heart output in such a way that finally it lowers the blood pressure. So whenever you hear beta blockers, their mechanism of action is that the what? They reduce the heart rate, the heart workload, and the heart output of blood. Yes. So that helps to what lowers the blood pressure. Then an example of that is atinolo, acetabulo, acetablo, timolo, nadolo, and metoprolol. If you notice, they all end with lo, L-O-L. 
So that's how to remember your what? Your bitter blockers. Your bitter what? Blockers. If you're in the example and like you don't know what to write, just write your name and pull law at the end in a drop. <laughs> I didn't tell you that, yeah. But they have bitter blockers. They reduce the heart rate, the heart workload, and the heart output of blood, which lowers blood pressure. And examples are Atinolo, Acebutolo, Timolo, Nadolo, and Meto. Prolog. Possible side effects of those bitter blockers are tiredness, cold feet and hand, his no insomnia, and also reduced heart beats. These are the side effects associated with what associated with bitter blockers. Second class of drug is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. The first thing to understand this um, this um, this class of drugs is that. What is angiotensin and what is angiotensin doing in the body? What angiotensin does is that angiotensin generally it narrows the artery, it narrows it, it makes it small. That's what angiotensin does, especially um, in the kidney and other peripheral arteries. That is what what that is what angiotensin does. So now something is inhibiting it. Something is inhibiting this angiotensin converting enzyme. In such a way that angiotensin will not be formed. I don't know if you get angiotensin what narrows the artery. When you hear inhibitor, it's stopping. I'm inhibiting you. I am stopping you. So angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor inhibits that enzyme. In such a way that um, angiotensin production is reduced. Definitely when angiotensin production is reduced, what happens? The arteries will not be narrowed again. Right? I'll go over it again. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor is what is a class of drugs, antihypertensive drugs that helps to reduce the blood pressure. How? The first question is what is angiotensin? Angiotensin is an enzyme that helps to what narrow the um, narrow your arteries. It narrows it, it makes it small. And you know when the arteries are narrowed, blood will be passing through that arteries with in, with high pressure. Blood will be going into those arteries with high pressure. So when you take this angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, it invariably helps to reduce the angiotensin in the body. So that there will not be enough angiotensin acting on these arteries to make them narrowed. I don't know if you get now. So examples of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are the captopri, lisinopri, ramipri, and Elana pre. So all angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor ends with what? Ends with pre. Are we seeing it? They all end with what? They all end with pre. And the side effects associated with angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are dry skin. The person will have a skin rash, dried cough. Sometimes it can lead to kidney damage. Do you understand now? So that is what that is for angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. Then another class of drug is the angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. What is it? The angiotensin 2 receptors blockers. That is those receptors that normally receive angiotensin to help to work with. They are being blocked. So when those receptors are blocked, angiotensin will not be able to carry out that function again. So that is why it is called what? Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. That means the receptors of angiotensin 2, they are blocked. An example of um, angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are the Vasatan, the Losatan, and the Candesatan. These angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, they all end with satan. Losatan, candesatan. You can see. So that is the difference between angiotensin 2 converting enzyme inhibitor and angiotensin 2 receptor blocker. In angiotensin 2 converting enzyme inhibitor, the enzyme that helps to convert angiotensin from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 is being inhibited. While angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, the receptors of angiotensin 2 is being blocked. Other class of antihypertensive drugs we are talking about is the calcium channel blockers. As the name implies, you see there's a blocker, there's something is blocking something. So calcium channel blockers stops 
calcium from going to the heart muscles. It stops it. You are, we are blocking you. Calcium, you are not going to the heart muscles. That is what this calcium channel blockers is doing. So when they stop these calcium channel blockers, the calcium channel reduces the sodium going to the muscles. But first of all, what does this calcium do normally? When calcium gets to the heart muscles, it increases the heart contraction. They have to be contracting very well. Bah, bah, bah. You, you get. So when there's a blockage in the calcium that is being that is going to the heart muscles, it reduces the contraction of the heart because it's not getting enough calcium. The contraction is what? The contraction is being reduced. And when the contraction of the heart is reduced, definitely the blood pressure reduces. That's, so that's the mechanism of action of calcium channel blockers. Then examples are the popular ones we use now. I'm not the pin, or the pin, the fed the pin, fellow the pin, and nika the pin. So the one I'm really familiar with that I use when I was doing my internship posting was uh, the pin and I'm low the pin. So just know that calcium channel blockers, they block calcium in such a way that calcium does not get to the heart. And when calcium does not get to the heart, it reduces what the contraction of um, the heart, thereby reducing blood pressure. The side effects associated with calcium channel blockers, that's this one, are palpitations. Uh, most people go down constipation, headache, dizziness, and swollen ankle. So these are the um, the comp that's the side effects of calcium channel blockers. Another class of drug is the vasodilators. As the name implies, it helps to dilate the blood vessels. It helps to relax the blood vessels. So that is what these vasodilators does. They help to work in the walls and muscles of the blood vessels to ensure that they are, di they are dilated, they are not constricted, they are not narrowed. So examples of vasodilators are hydraloxine, hydrochloride, and also minoxidil. minoxidil. So this hydraloxine, hydrochloride, some of the side effects include headache. This person can be having palpitations of the heart. While uh, miloxidil, this one is usually used when there is severe, like there is severe hypertension. So during this place, one of the side effects of miloxidil is that there is um, fluid retention. There is usually what? Fluid retention. Then another class of drug is the alpha blockers. The what? The alpha blockers. These alpha blockers, they reduce artery resistance. You know when blood is flowing at a high, like it's flowing through the arteries, there is resistance. So what these alpha blockers does is that they reduce what arteries resistance. An example of these alpha blockers is the doxazosine misylate and terazosine hydrochloride. Doxazosine misylate and terazosine hydrochloride. So these are the examples of what alpha blockers. Side effects associated with alpha blockers are fast heart rate and dizziness. Then the other class of drugs we have here is alpha-2 receptor agonists. Agonists, you are, they, they are working with alpha-2 receptor. That is working with what? Alpha-2 receptor. Whenever you hear agonists, it means ah, this drug is working with that particular uh, receptor. So alpha-2 receptor agonists. Example is methyl dopa. Methyl dopa. And uh, methyl dopa generally is known as the adomet. The adomet. So it helps to what? It helps to reduce blood pressure then the other one is combined alpha and beta blockers combined alpha and beta blockers so what these drugs actually does is that it is given through IV especially when this person is having hypertensive crisis so this um, drug labetalol you've heard of labetalol in the hospital so it's usually given during a hypertensive crisis so labetalol hydrochloride cavidalol they are all examples of what combined alpha and beta blockers and they are giving what IV of this um, this particular antihypertensive is that there can be a drastic drop of the blood pressure like a drastic drop of the blood pressure and examples like I said cavidalol, labetalol and hydrochloride so these are the various classes and various types of antihypertensive drugs don't forget the various antihypertensive drugs are the diuretics, the beta blockers, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, angiotensin 2 receptor, 
Then we came here, we said we have the chan uh, calcium channel blockers, the vasodilators, the alpha blockers, the alpha 2 receptor agonists, and the combined alpha and beta blockers. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to drop your questions and your comments in the comment section. And also, don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. For those that have not registered for our Telegram class, you have been missing a lot. Because once you register, you have access to all our voice notes on the various system. You have access to our voice notes on cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, nervous system, and so on. You also have access to our voice notes on research, on community health, on management, and whatsoever thing you think of about nurses. And you can drop your questions on a particular topic you want us to do a video or a voice note on. Thank you, and do have a wonderful day ahead. Bye.